Hello, and thank you for contacting Wave Support. I see from your clinical request that you're struggling with this post-RK patient, trying to find a lens that's going to be uh, able to stay on the eye comfortably. Well, just a couple thoughts. As you know, with uh, any of these post-refractive surgery patients, all the rules tend to go out the window. And uh, even though Wave is a powerful, powerful tool with some great uh, abilities, there are still some uh, problems we can sometimes run into with these weird corneas. First thought when we look at these topographies, um, as you know, quite often we don't get a lot of detail out here in this peripheral part of the cornea. So sometimes WAVE will do a lot of averaging in through these areas, and that's why sometimes we get some weird results on these um, fits. Uh, so with that said, um, just a couple thoughts. Um, it sounds like your patient struggled before with an on cornea fit, uh, but I'm assuming the patient wasn't in a WAVE on cornea fit. And what I found uh, quite often with some of these difficult corneas, you know, when I... Uh, fumble around chasing tails sometimes with some of the large, large diameter lenses. Uh, sometimes I find just going back to a really nicely fitting large on cornea fit lens uh, tends to be the most successful of all. So we'll just look at that for a moment here. Uh, you know, one option with this patient, I just kind of looked at uh, an option of going to an on cornea lens. And this option was just going with a really large diameter lens. Uh, in some cases, I've gone right up to the limbus on these patients to minimize movement. Uh, but somewhere around that 11 is kind of a good starting point. In this particular example, what I did is I set the uh, red dot probably on the inside uh, ring of that zone somewhere around 4, 4, 6, 4, 7. And then the uh, blue dot out around the outer edge of that red zone. I clicked on freeform and I put a little back ace for, uh, sphericity in the 0 0.05, minus 0 0.05 and let WAVE design the lens, and you see we have a back surface of this lens that very closely mimics the uh, topography. And I would expect this lens to do reasonably well in this patient. I usually start off with axial and a big tangential fan, but uh, initially I'm trying to get uh, these lenses to be pretty snug if I can so they're not sliding all over the place. So I'd probably start off axial and see where it takes me, and uh, but that would be one option if you were to try to stay on the cornea. So let's look back at your designs. Um, for a scleral design. And these actually look pretty good. I see why you put this uh, red anchor uh, point uh, back here at about five. Uh, what I might be inclined to recommend though is uh, since we're going to be trying to vault that corn anyways, that point is not as critical as being very, uh, spending a lot more time looking at this peripheral landing zone. And you could try to monkey around with uh, trying to adjust these uh, edge angles and stuff. But what I'd probably do, if we look at this lens, um, the back surface of your lens you lot have a lot going on here. And if you look at uh, what I tend to do in these patients, uh, for a starting point, I either use um, the wave tool, which is the scleral, semi-scleral design. And what I did is I just did a quick um, design on that and just let wave do the um, design for me. What I came up with, it enlarged the lens slightly, which creates, uh, which will probably reduce a little bit of that edge lift on the peripheral curve. But if you notice this back surface, the, uh, the lens and your design over here on the left side, uh, I know you had some uh, seal off and some fogging and stuff. If you get over here pretty close to where uh, almost the limbo area, you'll see this lens, if you look at the base curve up here in the left upper left-hand corner, you get pretty steep in some of those areas in the sixes and the sevens. And you'll look at this uh, back surface of this wave design lens, and you'll see it's pretty consistently in the 765, 750 range. So uh, I think you get a little nicer back surface and allows a nicer landing area. And I think uh, what I really rely on in some of the wave um, calculations, um, standard calculations, calculations that help us get this landing zone a little bit more aligned. So I'd probably use that as a starting point. Better yet, what I prefer to do in these post-operative cases, I have an OCT fitting set, a wave fitting set, in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, it's something you can get through wave, you can contact Vance over there, and uh, it's a um, set of scleral lenses uh, that you can actually put right on the eye, and I find that tremendously helpful. It takes a lot of this guesswork out. You can just put the lens right on the eye, find out when the fit's the best, you can adjust the edge lifts uh, right there in the chair, and then you all, all you have to do is import those uh, designs right into your uh, software and make the final make the final design. So uh, that might be something to look into. So to kind of summarize on this patient, uh, I, I think I would probably um, let Wave 
make a general lens using a semi-spoiled tool and use that as more of a starting point. Start fresh with that. And I wouldn't totally rule out that I'm cornea. What I've found through uh, past experience, um, you know, if I look at all the patients that I fit through the years, it seems more often than not, um, if I can get an on cornea fit to go, we tend to have fewer issues with seal off, um, comfort issues, um, physiological issues. So when I, whenever I can, I shoot for that on cornea design. So using your best uh, clinical judgment, and hopefully these uh, uh, recommendations will be helpful to you. Well, I wish you well. These are some of the most challenging cases around, but hang in there, don't get frustrated, and uh, thank you for contacting Wave Support. Have a great day.